It's time to take a break from the present and journey down Turboview's memory lane with a little R and R. Hey everyone, this is Chris Bucci, and welcome once again to Random Rerun, where we take a look back at a TurboGrafx game review or two from so long ago, my memory can barely remember it. Today we're going to talk about Dungeon Explorer and Dungeon Explorer 2. It's going to be a two for one today, two really awesome games for the system. In episode 111 of TurboViews, I talked about sounds you would hear wafting through an arcade. Well, that is very relevant here because this is also something I heard a lot back then. Remember, don't shoot food. Oh man, good old gauntlet. You see, Putt-Putt Golf and Games, which was my second home, which those of you who have been with the channel for a long time already know, used to have Gauntlet in the corner. I can still picture it when I close my eyes, and man, did I play that game a ton, not only by myself, but with a bunch of friends. We plunked a lot of tokens in there, let me tell you. But you could hear that game across the arcade all the time. And Dungeon Explorer is known for being sort of a clone of Gauntlet. You know, it resembles Gauntlet to a T. It's overhead, it's got generators with enemies coming out, it's got a maze-like structure with an exit, etc, etc, etc. However, with Dungeon Explorer, it's actually expanded with storylines and talking with villagers and main hubs and passwords to continue and that sort of thing. It's really beefed up. According to Wikipedia, it's, quote, considered a pioneer title in the action role-playing game genre with its cooperative multiplayer gameplay. Well, that's probably true, honestly, because the multiplayer aspect of the game is really, really a shining spot. Dungeon Explorer is also notable for being literally a launch game with the TurboGrafx-16, and in my opinion, it's a wonderful launch game. It's very elegant looking. Of course, again, the multiplayer is awesome. You know, it's just a really great showcase for the system. And I've always said that Dungeon Explorer would have been a wonderful pack-in title, maybe with like a secondary set for the Turbo Graphics. Like if the Nintendo had two or three different sets that came out, the Turbo Graphics could have had a multiplayer action set with a Turbo Tap and Dungeon Explorer and a couple controllers or something like that. But, you know, obviously they didn't do that and there was just the one model released with Keith Courage. Another thing this game is sadly known for is the ugly box art. <laughs> now, if you've been with the Turbo Graphics long enough, you know that the box art in general is not really that favorable. You ever see Bomberman? <laughs> but. This one always gets a lot of flack. If you look at the PC Engine version, it's not necessarily that much better, but it's definitely better than whatever this is. But what are you gonna do? You know, in a way, the ugly box art of Turbo Graphics games is actually part of the charm for me. So you know what? Whatever. You know me. I'm a fan. Ironically, I got Dungeon Explorer very late. I actually picked it up a few years after I got my system in 1994. I saw screenshots and heard about the game, I just never ran across it, you know? Once I picked it up, I think probably on clearance somewhere, holy crap did I enjoy it. I loved it, and it's one of those games that I could kick myself for not picking up earlier. Did you ever have that, where you pick up a game and you say, man, I should have got this a long time ago, and I definitely felt that about Dungeon Explorer. And that leads me to Dungeon Explorer 2, which is the sequel on the Super CD. Because I loved the first one so much, I now had to have the second one. Unfortunately, <laughs> by the time I went to find Dungeon Explorer 2, forget it. It was nowhere. In fact, TurboGrafx games in general in 94, 95 were pretty much non-existent on any store shelves, at least around here. I remember calling places, TurboZone Direct and other mail order places trying to find it. No luck. So I just sort of gave up. I ended up picking it up in the year 2000 when I was trying to complete my collection. So, you know, it took me a long time to get it, but it was worth it. Many people have said it was more of the same, but beefed up, and, and that's true. You got animated sequences, you got CD quality music, you got a, a much bigger journey with more people to talk to and explore. I mean, it's just, Dungeon Explorer 2 to me is everything the first one was and even more, and it's it's the epitome of some of the greatest games on the Turbo Graphics. In fact, 
Dungeon Explorer 2 is notable because uh, it was the first game I gave a perfect 5 out of 5. Another noteworthy fact about Dungeon Explorer 2 is that the localization was done by Working Designs. Can you believe it? During the end credits for the game, it says narration working designs. I didn't actually notice that until someone online pointed it out. And then I went back to check my end game credits. And sure enough, there it was. If you're a TurboGrafx fan, you know, working designs has a fun and unique little history. And it's kind of cool to see they had something to do with this game. Dungeon Explorer 2 was review number 11. And if you watch it on YouTube, you can see the original opening, which says TurboViews. It is the first episode that actually has the name TurboViews on it. Dungeon Explorer 1, which was review number 10, still says TurboGrafx Duo Review Show because originally I was just doing some TurboGrafx reviews as part of the My Game Room series, which was just going to be a bunch of random stuff. Uh, but then um, I decided to go ahead and continue the series. I had not decided to keep it going forever, but I went ahead and I changed the name and that's when it became TurboView. So that's kind of something cool. Uh, son of a hamster. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. But anyway, that's about it. There's a quick little look back on two reviews from a long, long time ago on two fantastic games. If you're a TurboGrafx newbie, you definitely want to play these titles. If anything, just pick up the first one. The second one can get kind of pricey. The TurboGrafx-16 games in general can be tricky for that reason, but Dungeon Explorer 1 and 2 complement each other really well, and they're fantastic games on this system. Obviously, there are some other versions and reworked editions of this game, but you can't beat the originals. So stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and play the original reviews back to back. Uh, and if you enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe. We're going to do some more random reruns as we go along and finish up the TurboView series here in the next uh, maybe couple of years. All right, this is Chris Bucci. Thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you soon. Dungeon Explorer was released on the TurboGrafx-16 during the system's first year and bears a striking resemblance to a great little arcade game called Gauntlet. You choose between similar kinds of characters, the game can have multiple players, you explore various dungeons searching for the correct exit, and your enemies come in huge swarms appearing out of destroyable generators. It's a great formula that I loved in Gauntlet and one that works extremely well in Dungeon Explorer. Plus, these elements are expanded upon, adding an almost adventure role-playing aspect to the game. Your mission is to find the Aura Stone, which possesses the powers of life, light, and happiness. You see, long ago, an alien race attacked the peaceful land of Odessia, and they have ruled ever since. The Aura Stone is said to be hidden deep within this peaceful land in an underground dungeon, and if it can be recovered, peace can finally reign supreme. Unfortunately, the evil King Natus knows of your plans and is out to find the stone for himself. The game is comprised of over a dozen individual levels with overhead worlds that connect to the most important areas, the dungeons. Talking to various villagers will help point the correct way to venture next. The castle is essentially the main hub and various other areas surrounding it are unlocked, in a sense, as you progress through the game. You'll start off by talking to the king and various people in Axe's village who will point you to the locked dungeon. Once you reach the end of this dungeon, a boss named Bull Beast will attack you. Defeating this boss will leave behind a crystal that will increase your character's level and skills. After making your way back out of the dungeon, you will then journey to Melba Village, which will eventually lead you to Gutworm Dungeon. The boss of this dungeon will leave behind a crystal and the pattern will repeat itself. While the majority of the game is pretty linear, at times you do have to search for a while to find out the correct area to explore next. There is a nice abundance of characters to choose from at the beginning, and each has his or her own strengths and weaknesses. For example, the fighter is an expert with combat and has the best attack range, where the gnome takes less damage but has much slower footwork and attack power. Their abilities to utilize the two types of magic, white and black, also varies from person to person. Along the way, you can unlock a few playable characters as well, such as the Hermit and the Princess. The character you choose at the beginning stays with you the entire quest.
The password that is given in order to continue will reflect this particular character, so make sure they are someone you like having around for the long haul. Remember Gauntlet? Someone was shot of food. Well, <laughs> this is also possible here, as you can accidentally destroy potions, magic, and other items left behind for you to collect. So be careful how itchy your trigger finger is. Sometimes you have no choice but to blow up something of value in order to progress through the stage. And that sucks. Your character has an energy meter, and when it's depleted, the crystals in the center act as extra lives. When they're all gone, the game ends, and a password is given, and you start over. Sort of. Your level and powers are retained when you continue, but you start at the opening screen. So you have to backtrack to the area you originally died. This can be a total pain if you've ventured pretty far out of the way from the main hub. The graphics are just great for a typical overhead action game, and considering this is a very early Turbo Graphics title, they are rather impressive. From the opening screen that teases us with multiplex layers, to the varied and strangely colorful dungeons that you would assume would be plain and dull, the game just looks great. To add to that, the music is just awesome. Eerie at times, catchy at others, just a great, well-rounded package. Everything fits the mood of the game perfectly. The controls are pretty good. Holding the attack button down automatically shoots for you. And the character freezes in the position you are firing as long as the button is held. This makes it much easier to aim your shots. If you find the right angle, you can take out enemies one by one plus their generators without even moving an inch. And if you get stuck or low on energy, just run your tail off and find the exit. Finding your way around Dungeon Explorer isn't as intimidating or crazy as it might seem at first. Although some of the stairs in a couple dungeons confuse the hell out of me. Wait, that's up. Oh no no wait, that's up. Oh, son of a hamster. Most of the bosses are pretty straightforward, but the challenge ramps up as the game progresses. Truthfully, it's harder to get to the boss than it is to defeat him. <laughs> Plus, you'll often see a place you need to go, but you can't till you unlock it by doing something else. The game is lengthy, but not epic. Luckily, there are a lot of other cool goodies to find, like secret passwords that soup up your character, or that lead to special secret endings. Plus, there is nothing like getting a group together, a turbo tap, and doing some dungeon fighting with your friends. The game is even better with multiple players. But be careful, when a character dies, he takes one of the extra life crystals with him. So, find someone who's pretty good at video games. I really like Dungeon Explorer. Some may say that the game doesn't offer much for a single player, but I find it to be a really good length, not too frustrating, and it has a very unique twist on its gauntlet-like roots. Plus, adding more players just makes it even better. Dungeon Explorer is one of the better first-year releases for the TurboGrafx-16. Four Turbo Chips out of five. Dungeon Explorer 2 is the sequel to the first-year release on the TurboGrafx-16 called, and I know this is going to be a shock, Dungeon Explorer. The original game was a cute little gauntlet clone, showcasing overhead action mixed with a bit of role-playing. When Dungeon Explorer 2 was announced, the excitement originally packed into a turbo chip was now hyped up to be even better on a Super CD. Released toward the end of the Turbo's life cycle in America, Dungeon Explorer 2 always seemed to be hard for me to find. But eventually, the search was over, and it was definitely worth the wait. I gotta be honest, after popping the disc into the console, the no sound title screen had me a tad worried. Where have we seen that before? But this was short-lived, as it immediately changed to an awesome introductory sequence, revealing each character and providing a quick overview of the upcoming quest. Sweet. After pressing run, we then choose from eight different characters to play as. Each has his or her own weapon, strengths, and limitations, and a unique usage of black and white magic. This time, the game even names each of the characters, such as Ephraim the Wizard, Alex the Fighter, and Fina the Elf. 
After making the appropriate character selections, the game starts with another long animated sequence, showing off the story past and present. In the first game, the evil Natos was defeated, restoring peace to the land of Odessia. A half century later, this harmony and bliss is about to come to an end, as Fades, known as the Evil One, I'm guessing he's the bad guy, brings Natos back from the dead. And what else would Natos do when he first comes back to life? Well, steal the Aura Stone again, of course, making him and his evil army extremely powerful. The country west of Odessia, Solus, is now under attack, and the king's daughter has been kidnapped. Eight brave warriors volunteer to enter the treacherous dark maze and bring her back alive. Well, thank goodness, sir, else we really wouldn't have a game, would we? Just like in the original Dungeon Explorer, the sequel is an overhead view action-adventure gauntlet-like game with a mixture of role-playing. This time, however, the role-playing aspects are definitely beefed up as there are more places to explore and a bunch of characters to talk to. You search around to find information on the correct routes to lead you to various dungeons. In each dungeon, you beat the hell out of baddies, or run your you-know-what's off to avoid them, and find the exit. You can even find hidden potions and items such as extra lives, speed enhancers, and mirrors that bounce your main shot all around the screen. Now don't worry, the entire game isn't filled with long, drawn-out animations. Most of the dialogue is still text-based, and this quest has a lot more people willing to gab. Talking to this guy in red is always helpful, but where the hell does he come from? He's all over the place. Now I realize he's the last of his kind, and he's just trying to be helpful, but can we say stalker? And what the hell is this guy doing? Oh, never mind. The enemies come in large numbers, materializing out of various generators, which can also be destroyed. Some enemies will also leave behind a potion or something special for you to collect, but be careful, they can be destroyed as well. Most dungeons have a boss or two to fight. These bosses leave behind crystals that level up your character, and also, based on what color they are, increase your character's various abilities. The bosses this time around are a little more diverse and seem to have often multiple attacks. Their difficulty increases as the game goes on, but once again, none of them are overly or frustratingly difficult. I love the Dracula-like enemy who attacks in various ways and disappears into the dark in his final form. Very cool. There are a lot more dungeons to explore in this one, and I mean a lot. The game also has a lot of variety in the number of traps each area has, so the gameplay isn't just a matter of destroying all the enemies on screen or, or just finding the exit. You have to avoid spikes, flames, movable pinch points, ouch! The dungeons this time around also seem to have a much more maze-like structure as they often take some time to get out alive. Along the way you'll find areas you need to unlock in a sense in order to progress, such as here. Until you defeat a certain boss, this guy won't help you across the river. You need to prove yourself to him. Well, bite me. I should just steal the damn thing. As you progress, you can also unlock certain characters to play, such as Gwen, Miriam, and uh, the mechanical man. <laughs> Other places you can visit include the royal libraries that give you additional information on characters and villages bars that replenish your life meter, and Sharkies, who challenges you to a hand of blackjack and can help you stock up on extra lives. Of course, win some, lose some. You also have the ability to switch characters in mid-game by finding just the right area. This is a wonderful thing as it allows you to use strategy and select what character will work best with what stage. Yeah, let's get rid of Seppi right now. To make traveling easier, a wizard scattered around the game will send you back to previous locations. After using all of your life crystals, you have the ability to continue, and the sequel is much nicer on how far back it sends you. Sometimes it allows you to start right from where you left off. Dungeon Explorer 2 saves the game into the system's memory, and this makes for easy continuation. Although the password feature is still enabled. The graphics are just great, 
The animated sequences are all wonderfully created, the colors are beautiful adding a rich texture to even the underground dungeons, and the levels all have a really nice look for an overhead game. I will admit, the overworld areas tend to look extremely similar and could have used a little more variety, but there is so much to see that it never gets old. The music coming from the Super CD is just epic. The first game had awesome music on a chip, and they definitely outdid themselves this time with the CD format. Plus, they also recreated some tunes from the original game, giving it that nice touch of familiarity. As to be expected, the processor-specific sound effects can be a bit lame, but the CD soundtrack overrules any negatives in the audio. The controls are identical to that of the original game. You freeze when shooting in one direction, you move based on what character you choose, it's pretty much a carbon copy from before. If you move left or right after talking to someone, for some reason you talk to them again. This gets frustrating when you're in a hurry, so definitely learn this quirk in order to avoid it. The animated intermissions never seem cheesy or boring, with very good voice acting and visual detail. They appear before specific boss battles for a quick before the attack taunt, during certain important plot points, and are almost always very intriguing. Dungeon Explorer 2 follows a similar linear path like its predecessor, but because of the variety in levels and the amount of possible exploration, it definitely has a more non-linear feel. Some places and items can't even be picked up unless you're a particular character, such as this wizard who will only give upgrades to a witch, hence Gwen can benefit from it. So far I've mentioned the game being chocked full of goodies. Well, what if I said that yes, it is also a multiplayer game with up to five people who can be on the screen at once. As usual, you share extra life crystals, and the strategy of figuring out who deserves the power-up after defeating a boss is still in play, but talk about the ultimate party game. Some have said the original game for a single player wasn't the greatest. Well, this has definitely been addressed, as the extra variety thrown in means there are a lot of hidden things to find you won't even see in one pass. Oh, and that one pass equals about 8 to 10 hours, so it's a pretty long quest. Throw in the multiplayer feature, and this game packs everything in it you would want from this type of genre. Any minor flaws I noticed are eclipsed by the rest of the game, and Dungeon Explorer 2 is just awesome, including some of the best the Turbo had to offer. 5 Super CDs out of 5 for upgraded Gauntlet Clone action.